to frame by frame it is the new year welcome to 2015 happy new year 12 people 12 people <laughs> i'm sitting here of course with andy hello i'm sitting here with steven <laughs> you're useless at that <laughs> I just... we're not, we're not going to keep on trying come on right let's not try let's just be crap like that it's <laughs> funny. Crap. He, he's here and i'm here yeah and i don't know why i'm pointing because it's radio there's a cat in between us again. yeah they're... And Andy is a little bit allergic to cats, so I'm kind of waiting for him to turn blue. <laughs> that was me wheezing. Was, it was, That's yeah. what that was. <laughs> I've, I've never tried acting wheezing before. Really? Yeah. It's I'm not like, very good at it. Am it I? sounds like you were rubbing a pig. <laughs> Well, that's that's my prop to make the wee sound this little pig I brought in here. <laughs> you talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Well, who the hell else are you talking to? Talking to me? I'm no funny how. I mean, funny. I'm Peter Bink. We all go a little mad sometimes. Apparently, it doesn't spend time in this town. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! So anyway, uh, it is the new year. Yeah, We're in is. high spirits. We're still in good, good spirits, still coming yeah. out of the festival. We thought we'd talk about Hollywood's obsession with uh, dystopian movies. <laughs> <laughs> post-apocalyptic disastrous, disastrous futures that ends up with with usually desolate wastelands and very pale palette clothing yeah because there just seems to be uh just an incredible amount of these films and still coming out now and still very popular almost as popular as romantic comedies yeah, but, yeah. I don't know how to part with each other <laughs> they, should, they should try it possibly. they did a zombie romantic film One Bodies he did, which was. Uh... But why not? I mean, I, I, is there a romance to be had in in post apocalypse? I mean, but there's Book of Eli, there's Mad Max, there's uh, the Terminator films. I always feel as though when I when I see romance or anything in in, in those kind of a film, it's kind of like, well, you'll do. You're the last girl on this earth. Mm. You'll do. It's kind of it's not exactly romantic or clinchy, is it? No, I guess not. And then sometimes, a lot of the times. It's like a big group of guys, isn't it? Yeah. And then sometimes, like one woman, one woman will be introduced, and he's sort of like, "Oi, up!" Yeah. She's gonna get raped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe it would maybe be a romantic not. thing, and I shouldn't say things like that. But you'd, it, it was like that in Alien Three, though, when when all the prisoners realised that there was a woman. On the, yeah. You know, so it, it's there is a certain nastiness to the to to post apocalyptic futures that makes it uncomfortable to be a male or a female. Because yeah. you know, there's there's not that many people around anymore, and which leads us nicely onto Maze, Maze Runner. Runner. Ooh, that was almost a link. Very that was good. almost a link. I was trying really hard. I was straining for breath. I think I needed to kind of, I needed to wheeze the pig again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there you go. Can you tell me anything about yourself? Who you are? Where you came from? Can you tell me your name? I, uh, I can't remember anything. Day one, Greeny. Rise and shine. What is this place? Welcome to the lake. Who put us here? We don't know. What's through there? You guys can't just keep me here. I can't let you leave. Why won't you tell me what's out there? That's the maze. Every morning when those doors open, the runners look for a way out. And no one has ever survived a night in the maze. What happens to them? 
or we call them grievers. We don't belong here. Somebody built the maze. I think it's time we find out what we're really up against. You're not like the others. You're curious. What the hell is that? This is the first real clue. You found it. Who knows where this might lead us? It's a girl. Thomas. Everything started changing the moment you showed up. What if we were sent here for a reason? The doors aren't closing. They're here. They're gonna keep coming back until they kill us all. We get out now or we die trying. Get it. We're already dead. You sure about this? No. We can't leave. They won't let us. the others. You're curious. But if you want to stay here, I need to know that you're going to follow the rules. It starts quite well. This guy just wakes up in the lift, lifts um, uh, elevating. Hmm. He's, he's in there with a pig. He is. Hey, he's the in link. there with a pig. There's the link. That's wow. Why we, that's yes. why I brought the pig. As a sort of mascot. That's <laughs> a trophy. A trophy <laughs> yeah. for surviving yeah, for... the Maze Runner. And so he has no idea who he is. Doesn't remember any, any of his past. Doesn't remember his name. And he sort of comes around in this... Uh, okay. It's like a like a forest. So, well, it's like a clearing. There's like forests all around him. And huge walls. And... Um, <clears throat> like, like a kind of a hospital garden. Without the benches. Yeah, if the hospital garden had really vast CGI walls, then exactly like that. <laughs> exactly. But no hospital. <laughs> no, no patients. No, okay. no, no, no. So he wakes up and he's in the middle of this square. Yeah, and there's, uh, there's people around him, you know, and he has no idea what's going on. And <clears throat> again, it, it's all guys at first. A girl does get introduced. Just one? Just one. Oh, why did they do that? Well, it's, it, 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 it yeah. I didn't see right when the girl gets introduced into it. She hardly does anything with. She doesn't really advance. It's, Other than no, time. she does advance the story. I'm on about, but it, she doesn't really have anything to do. But usually they throw them in to create a sense of conflict between well, the guys I, who are there. That's what I thought was going to happen. Yeah. But it Hence, didn't. So she's there, but she's not advancing the plot. She only, expecting... she only comes into it towards the end, anyway. Really? Okay. Yeah. Now this guy who's just been introduced. Um, something a little bit different about this guy. He's a bit more inquisitive. Um, Dylan O'Brien. Dylan O'Brien. Thomas. Yeah. He played Thomas. Yeah. Yeah, he played Thomas. <laughs> but he doesn't remember his name until um, there's one person in the gang who really doesn't take to him, as is always the case in these things. Oh yeah, there's always one. Yeah. So the night, the first night he's there, they hold a celebration. You know, hey, we've got another person here. This is great. And they're all drinking, and he's a bit of an outsider, this new guy. He doesn't really want to get involved with it. But the 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 main guy who doesn't really like him gets him in. So come on, let's have a bit of a fight, you know. And they're all around. Tom, it's, it's, the Val, Tom, it's the Val Kilmer, Tom Cruise, yeah. uh, Top Gun thing. You're dangerous. Yeah, exa- like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then they end up hugging at the end. I'm sure. No, no, not oh, at all. Okay, okay. No. But yeah, so he, he gets he gets impaled with a spear. The bad guy. Yeah. The guy we don't like. Yeah, well, he's got he, he's got his own little story arc where he just cares about everybody there and he doesn't want things to change. Oh, right. Well, you know, okay. they survived for three years. Why, you know... Yeah, why change it? But this Thomas guy wants them out of there. You know, he so said, we need to get out. You know, we, this is not how we're supposed to live. We need to get out. So he doesn't like them for those reasons. <clears throat> but there's two people and they're called Maze Runners. Now... What happens every morning of this, these huge walls that surrounding this like sort of nice little clearing and forest area, they, they open up and inside is like a labyrinth 
Okay. Inside the well, outside the walls, and these maze runners have mapped the entire labyrinth and they've run it every single day to try and find a way of getting. And out. then it, it closes at night time. It closes, and if right. you get, no one's ever survived night in the on their right. own. Okay. So that's said very early in the film, so you know, you know that, that this, this guy point, Thomas is going to get. I'm surviving yeah. eye out there, isn't he? Yeah. And there's these little. Th- these sort of half sort of biomechanical beasties that are out there um I forget they do your loot I forget what they call them now it was like a a word that you make they're like sentry devices kind of a, yeah like, there's a word oh. anyway it doesn't matter but yeah and insert the <coughs> word okay we'll, insert we'll, we'll, the word we'll... the grievers okay and um they're quite scary tank CGI <laughs> monsters <laughs> it's all CGI <laughs> and um, so, and they have a like a, an injector, and they call them getting the sting. So if you get the sting, um, it basically puts this chemical in them and drives them insane. Uh-huh. So I think Thomas's first day of being there, he comes face to face with this guy who's sort of like, "It's your fault. Why are you here? You shouldn't be here." And attacks him, and he runs away, and they have to basically throw him into the the maze at night time and get him deaded. Okay. Yeah. So, so anyway, the films. That's kind of what the films about. And uh, Scotland getting out of the maze and try, it, it, you know, the equilibrium being that they're used to it. They're ma- the the maze. They're not really interested in, in leaving the situation. They yeah. keep on getting supplies from the ground from from this elevator. That, yeah, the, the supplies come up with that. Did they ever do anything with that? Did they try to go down to find out where? That's they... a, if the it is said it is said in the sort of if they've tried that, but the lift doesn't go back down if anyone's in it. The moment no one's in it anymore and it's level, it goes down. But if someone went and sat in it, it wouldn't go down. Yeah, but it's interesting because they could have found interesting ways to winch someone slightly above it. Yeah, or maybe cut this, you know, someone out the floor and then just gone down the chain. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. maybe that's it. <clears throat> Could have had, yeah, maybe that would be the sequel. Ch- chain Runner. Well, uh, <laughs> well, well, I don't yeah, know if it, it, I think it was, um, I think it, did, it made enough money to, um, to I said, it's definitely open for a sequel. There's going to be a sequel, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean, if it's made enough money. But, so um, there's this main guy who's sort of like the leader, and he ends up going out. Yeah. Um, to do a maze run. To um, see where this other guy got stung, you know the one who attacked him. Yeah. And while they're out there, he gets stung, and they're all waiting at the gates. The gates are starting to shut, and you just see one of the maze runners and the the, the gang leader starting to make the way. And Thomas knows he's not going to make it, so he runs out and gets locked in there with them. And they have to survive a night in the maze. That's it. On their own. And that's the kind of the main plot thing. No, no. He survived the night. And that's just up, one of the. That's just one of the things. Yeah. So, um, so it's a, it's a, a tests. Yeah. Well, so he ends up killing one of these beasts. These arachnid biomechanical beasts. Yes. As one of the walls is shut in, he sort of runs through and it squishes him. He gets oh. squished. So what did? They're uh, like deaded and squished. It. Okay. Yeah, deaded and squished. To our uh, vernacular, I think. Yeah. deaded. But what was interesting there was a it, it, during that night when they get attacked by this biomechanical arachnid arachnid beastie Centurion beastie grievers there's a few jump scares oh they, yeah they don't work you know why they don't work because they're not delivered on the E of the three yeah they land on a beat they land on a beat yeah as in they're on one two three four when, they, when you're yeah, expecting yeah. it and it's actually sort of timed with the music I remember I've, I've you know, I I um, I play I over, I played it a few times just to try and count the rhythm. I'm thinking that's why it doesn't work. It's not. It doesn't catch you. It it comes when you expect it to come. Yeah. Not yeah. one, two, three. Yep. There it is. You know. Maybe we could do an edit on that. Just so the the actual sequence of scares, just to see if we can get a scare. And then send it to the filmmaker and say we've th- done it better you than it. you. This is how you do it. Yeah. 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 Just have two test audiences run it how they did it and then run it how we kind of just snipped away. away at, and yeah, watch and jump. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm up for it. In about eighteen years' time, when I don't have a baby to look after, <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> pointless. Yeah. But um, yeah, so that's that's 
basically it. Yeah, well, because, because he sort of killed this arachnid beastie thingamajig biomechanical yeah. centurion. Grievers. The following day, um, the, the, the big gates open and they, you know, they come out in the morning. Um, this is when the girl's introduced. All right. Comes up in the lift and she sort of, she wakes up, says Thomas and then just passes out again. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> So the, her name is not Thomas. No, so. her, I forget her name in it, but um, she hardly does anything really. That's it. Okay, uh, Teresa. Teresa. That's it's Teresa. Her name is Teresa. But she's holding the letter saying, "This is the last one, ever," and the lift never goes back down, and the gates don't shut. So that night, they get attacked by the biomechanical arachnid beasties. Right. See, that's that, that. That's you didn't. But you didn't expect that. No, I didn't expect that, and. What made it quite one aspect of that I liked is the 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 guy you're not supposed to like. He wants everything to stay the same and doesn't like him. Yeah. You can now say, well, it's your fault that we've lost so many of these people, so many of our people. Yeah, that's that's yeah. So there's kind of like yeah, you start to gain a little bit of uh, empathy. And well, there's it's just a nice little dynamic. Like, was he right? Was he wrong? You know. Which so, is good because a lot of these films always have it black and white. He's he's he was wrong. I I, I should never have. Uh, what wanted to keep things the same way you were right Thomas you you mm. delivered us to a to a brighter bigger future and yeah you know, they, they could have gone that way but they, obviously they didn't and I suppose it, it, uh, it asked questions is it okay to just sit down and just let the world happen or do you make things happen and um, the dangers yeah. of both of it's them. like Jurassic Park and Richard Attenborough bringing back dinosaurs I mean he, he felt bloody well you know he felt felt bad as well so we for should. doing that for messing with you know but it's like why mess with things you know interesting uh, you're looking forward to Jurassic World this no I'm not <laughs> I'm really not no um, I'm not I'm, sure about it I'm not interested in in you know dinosaurs anymore I mean what have you got against dinosaurs we have learned more in the past decade from genetics than a century of digging up bones a whole new frontier has opened up. We have our first genetically modified hybrid. We just went and made a new dinosaur? Probably not a good idea. Well, I don't know, because now they've got some new research saying that uh, dinosaurs actually were feathered, mm. that they were all had feathers. Yeah. So um, all of a sudden there's this new camp of dinosaur enthusiasts that's going to be angry if they if the dinosaurs are not anatomically correct and complete with but you know what feathers. they've done though don't you they've um, made a super dinosaur oh, no. they combined DNA from different dinosaurs and this human DNA and the um, DNA Isn't from other like things like Godzilla kind of a yeah and well they've made this super Super dinosaur. It's the Americas. That's going to go right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, of course. Why, why did they do this? Why did they do it? They <laughs> did not realise that, yeah, this is not a good idea. I mean, this is, this is why they do it in movies, because they don't want people to do it in reality. I mean, Dollar the Sheep was was a low risk factor <laughs> when it came to cloning and you know, splicing genes. And, you know, I'm so glad they didn't do a human version of that sheep, because that would yeah. be weird. But I, I don't see why they need to make the nastiest, biggest dinosaur, and, uh, and expect us to to understand and appreciate all the ones who are actually running for their lives. Yeah, of it. but that. But my beef with Maze Runner, right? Okay, <laughs> let's, let's leave Jurassic Park well alone for now because. Yeah. It's, 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 but you've got a beef. I've got a beef with it right, because. Okay. I don't. I don't think I've just I've explained it perfectly well, but <laughs> finally they get out, right? Yeah. And you find out that this has been a test. These group of people, there's been a virus that has attacked um, humankind's minds. Okay. Right. Or I should say that the whole world's been bleached out by the sun. Right. It's been like perpetual sunlight on the entire planet. Perpetual sunlight. Yeah. In other words, the, the earth isn't spinning anymore. I, the, the, the science is off with the way they okay. explain it. Right. <clears throat> perpetual sunlight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so it's just, it's basically sand is desert the whole world as far as you can tell by this is desert your typical dystopian desert right right but there's certain people didn't oh yeah and like I said these um, 
there was a virus that attacked the human brain that sent them all crazy and mad and mm -hmm. but a certain handful of people didn't get it right. and these were special people now for reasons I don't quite understand these special people they decided to test okay so they've gone through a series of tests which one looked like they were being drowned but they survived that and now this this test is this maze is to get out of it you pass the test right okay first of all if you've got this group of people that are special why try to kill them why not medically find out what's different with them medically do it yeah like, and then introduce it to the population it would have been a boring film but it, it, it would have it would have solved a few problems yes them. and um <clears throat> But meal to beef is it's the the world as far as it's explained as deserts. So how the hell have they made this, which is incredibly vast, complicated maze, which changes every single night, with its own sort of biosphere? Yeah, because it's got it's lush greenlands. It's a know? biotope of complete. Um, yeah, of, of everything that that they want that so. So in other words, their priorities are instead of actually trying to rejuvenate the earth with this kind of uh, with this biotope, um, this this environment yeah. to 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 find you know to reestablish life on earth, they're using it to challenge special people um, to see if they're worthy of of something. Yeah. Of because at the end of it, they're just getting a, hot, yeah. a, a helicopter and they go, they fly off. That's it. So clearly, to the next maze to run. I don't know, but I just didn't. Odd. Yeah, it's very odd. But it's like if you if you break it down that way, if you just take away the whole idea of the story, what the heck is the the thought processes behind that? What? Why? Why do? Why go to the trouble? It it's, seems to be that yeah. uh, that humans really just don't have a clue, and they're just. <laughs> messing around with them you know, even though but, the film's cl yeah. it's cliche in many ways and it's got your typical characters that you'd, yeah. you'd expect and then you've got all these background characters that never say anything they're just there for to, paint to get killed scene, off you know, or to, to get, well yeah, yeah you, when the the, the arachnid right beasties hit yeah. you need people to kill you've got to have stunned. red shirts yeah but yeah exactly gotta have red shirts yeah yeah brilliant but um, but I was kind of enjoying that but when it got to the end and oh it had been a test and it's like they're waking up it was a dream yeah and they yeah, get told this by um, on a video you press the button and a video comes on and a oh. woman's telling them there's all these people are dead behind her and she suits herself in the, in the head at oh. the end of it which is, which is nice <laughs> but, <laughs> and uh, yeah so at the end of it I was kind of like oh, oh that's, that's how you chose so, to end it yeah so the, 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 <laughs> and I just don't get that how they've done it How and it had its own sort of weather but outside this maze which they can run in a few hours. Yeah, it's just complete. This kind of reminds me of Lost, in a way. Why go to the trouble of having that whole uh, underground bunker? Why have that whole camp of people on an island? Why have the temporal thing? Why, why, why go to su such uh, trouble? And then nothing is ever explained, and nothing is. There's no reason for it. It's just like somebody has an idea for a maze. Yeah, and they think, wouldn't it be cool to have people running around this maze? Because it's based on a best-selling book, as everything yeah. goes. But let's not. But maybe there's something that they, they missed from the book, and um, and maybe because a lot of the, these stories, these apocalyptic stories, are coming from books at the moment. Mm. I mean, there's um, there's the Maze Runner, there's Divergent, yeah. the Hunger Games. These are three obviously going to be successful series of books, or already established successful stories that. Mm probably all have that similar something similar is that there is something going on but yet it's not really a logical way forward of, of thinking yeah. it, they've either gone back to the stone age or they've just completely lost it gone mad and decided to build giant mazes to have people running around for no reason whatsoever <laughs> so it, it's it is fascinating how they all there is a kind of a link to a, a nonsensical idea but it's all based on the one idea that oh, wouldn't it be cool if and then just then just populate it with characters, and, and then no worry, it's not worry about explaining it. And because everything that tends to come out of Hollywood, it has to be a series of films now. It can't just be a yeah. standalone film and think, oh, that was really good. Leave it alone. It's like no, we need to. It's almost when they're writing these films and making them that they're thinking of the sequel and the third one already. There, there is so a we, fear 
there is a and not not we're not talking about our positive fear of yeah, of, yeah. of actually doing uh, creating art for art's sake. There's a fear in Hollywood of of not uh, having a follow up success, and so they have to kind of they have to cultivate things to make them fit the series idea. That, mm. I mean, the, the Hobbit films. Are, I mean, nobody really wants to have four Hobbit films, but there they are. Three Hobbit Three? films. Three? Yeah. I thought they made one into two parts. That was that. Was that part the, two? It's part two, yeah. Because Gail Del Toro was originally doing it, and he said, "There's a a, a, ta- a part. Ta- in, <laughs> there's a ta- There's a prostitute in the Hobbit, oh, and they thought I, when they get to the prostitute bit, that's a, a, a separation that they can do between two films. Right. And, so been... and Gail Del Toro thought it was a good idea, and I I I trust him. But not splitting the second one into two. I don't know. I've yeah, not, I'm not seen a Battle of Five Armies yet, and by all accounts, is the best of the three. That's probably. What everyone's saying. Yeah, from what we've heard. But everyone has said, I won't go back and watch that. I'll watch the Lord of the Rings films again, and will not go back and watch the Hobbit film. But it's because there are all, there are all these sequels being spawned for all these films, and the problem is, if you know that it's going to be a there's going to be a sequel coming up, it's like in Divergent. Uh, I've just watched that. I knew that she was going to survive. Yeah. I knew that he, that, that the, the guy who she um, falls in love with. I know that well, they were both going to be jumping on a train at the end. It's very predictable, and probably with Maze Runner, I, I'm taking it that Teresa and Thomas are alive at the end of this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, because they can't do they can't do it without it. They cannot just um, k- kill off characters that are are supposed to be there for the sequels. They, mm. they would never do that, and that's the sh- it's a shame because. So again, right? I'm going to go back to it, but that's the reason why I like Joss Whedon. Yeah, because he will kill the main character off in a film. He did it in Serenity, where he killed off um, yeah. the the pilot guy. I forget his name now. But I mean, at least you weren't expecting that. Try, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and everyone's now thinking Age of Ultron. Who's going to die? Because he's going to kill one of the main characters off. But now we know it can't be Iron Man because he's going to be in the next. Yeah. Uh, Captain America film so it can't, be, it can't be can't be Captain America then because there's no because they've released they've they've shown what films are coming out next so it's probably going to be a key character but not a character who's got a standalone film a franchise going so it's probably going to be like Black Widow yeah yeah I mean the, yeah it'll be something that's just not worth keeping around yeah but then that's going to piss off the fans right or not that's a good question <laughs> God <laughs> God has spoken. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and with the okay. scent of citrus lavender. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Airwick. Oh, um, brilliant. Maybe that's a, an indication that we've actually gone for half an hour already. And uh, yeah, but uh, Maze Runner, good film. It's okay. It's yeah. watchable. It's watchable. Um, yeah. What did you think of Divergent? Divergent. Um, oh, yeah, Divergent. Yeah, Divergent is. Um, it's the first of four so far, isn't it? Um, yeah, science about... fiction stories, and um, it's a, it's not a film that you can really go into and just get lost in. Probably like Maze Runner again, you kind of you start to label. Yeah, so I meant to say there's a, this really nice little chubby kid in the Maze Runner. You know, I knew from because yeah. he, he got along with the main character really well. Friendly, and they, happy. Developed this really special bond. Ch- chunky or Chucky? Chunky, chunk, flabby. A little bit, a little bit. I thought little his little name bit. was Chunk. Am I think? I'm thinking of the Goonies. You're thinking of the Goonies. <laughs> but there's, it looks like it looks there's like no like truffle the shuffle going on in this. But he looks like the Goonie kid, right? He does. Yeah, yeah he does yeah, that yeah, lovable yeah, yeah, yeah. chubby little kid. And you yeah. just know, right? He's going to have to die. He'll die at some point. Die, and yeah. that's the, your your emotional thing. You that's where you're supposed to cry in the film. And, and it's towards yeah. the end oh. where he's guess. But you know how he dies? He dies saving the main guy. Oh, okay. So you just say, uh, which is slightly different in Divergent because um, I mean, okay. So let's just explain Divergent first. Okay. Um, trailer. You nervous? How are you? For your test? No. I was terrified. The only way our society can survive is for each of you to claim your rightful place. Today you will take a test that will help you discover who you truly are. The future belongs to those who know where they belong. 
This was supposed to tell me what to do. We're supposed to trust the, the test. test. Didn't work on you. They call it divergent. You can't let them find out about you. They're always watching. You have to hide, or they'd never expect to find you. Welcome to Dolanus. The two stages of training. The first is physical. Push your bodies to the breaking point. You're never gonna win. I like that. It's good to know. Keep tension here, okay? The second is mental. Face your worst fears and conquer them. You made a mistake choosing Thomas. He'll find out about you. I know what you are. It's been a long time since I can trust anyone. I don't want to be just one thing. I want to be brave and selfless and intelligent and honest and kind. If you want to survive, follow me. Divergence threaten the system. It won't be safe until they're removed. We have to fight back. Ready. Okay, so that was the trailer. The trailer. Yeah, I like that. It was a short, a sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Not as long as the feature. <laughs> That's how I like my trailers. It's kind of like a taster for the main <laughs> film that makes me want to watch it. You could even say that it's a teaser. Yeah. I feel slightly teased. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Divergent, it's a series of films. It's science fiction. It's a dystopian future. Um, the, the, the Romanian population, whoever they are, wherever they're from, obviously they're in America. Yeah, um, and they've been split into different, um, depending on their emotional um, pathways. So you've got the ones who are caring and giving, who love the land, who work the land. You've got the ones who are the thinkers, who are kind of like uh, into the, I, I guess they're into the politics and the structural. Uh, you know, they're kind of like, they're almost like the showrunners. Yeah, and then you've got the um, the humanitarians I think right, got humanitarians yeah. and then you've got the rebellious what were they called they were called uh, Rapscallions the 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 um hang on I've got to look it up already oh my god what were they called ragtags um hang on do do run 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 do do run run <laughs> hang on I, I've got to get this right because it's going to sound really crazy Dauntless of course yeah, yeah which straight away made me think of Slivering House all of a sudden, I'm thinking. I'm in Harry Potter. I'm thinking, oh, there, there's going to yeah. be like a sorting hat. So th this is going to be a, a, a girl who who lives in an ordinary family, an ordinary house, plain clothed. It's a, a, a America's practicing communism, even though they reject it. Kind of a, a, yeah, a yeah, feel yeah. to it. And of course, uh, she, it's her turn. So we're we're looking at the story through her eyes uh, when she decides when when she she decides to choose the faction that she's going to stay with. And if she goes to a faction where her parents are not, then she will not have contact with them again. Apparently. Even right. though she has contact with them <laughs> quite yeah. a few times. I think her um, mum saved her <laughs> life at one point, doesn't she? Pretty much. Um, so she's got to make a decision. She doesn't know what to do. Um, her brother is also... Um, it's, it's his turn to uh, also choose his faction. I'm just going to have some water before I die. Nearly, I've nearly smashed this bottle already. Wow. Yeah. It's mad a fine H2O. Mad a fine H2O. It's Kirkland, natural spring water, courtesy of Costco. Other natural spring waters are available. <laughs> Glasgow tap water. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so it, it, it's it, the, the main girl in this and the brother, they're both going to choose their faction. Uh, he's pretty, pretty sure where he's going to go. He's a thinker. He's a. Yeah, so he's going to wear a blue tunic um, that's all I know I can't remember what yeah. what he really is doing but it's kind of a political thinker and uh, they all have this ceremony where they all sit there with their parents and their parents groom, groom them and say you know we're, we're ready to let you go whatever you decide whatever you decide but before that they are tested to figure out if they um, 
like a sorting hat tell in a way like Harry yeah, Potter yeah. they sit in a chair and um, pretty much they get told by the process of the test who they who they're best suited for however the girl when she sits in the chair she, she gets um, she, she gets pulled out and the, the woman who is actually testing her you know, tells her you know just just say that the, the test was inconclusive it, it didn't work for you so you're just gonna have to use your own instinct and choose um, so she uses her own instinct and uses and chooses dauntless right. because she, we, we see her clocking them in you know when they're running off the train and she's thinking you know there's something that's drawing to her and to, to that group and um, she likes trains and she likes jumping from the jumping and rolling around and being stomp like you know they, I'm surprised they didn't actually have members of stomp just doing little dance numbers throughout that film because that would yeah. have been quite entertaining um, so her parents are obviously distraught and disappointed they're not allowed to mix with each other apparently it seems as though that whenever you see one group they're not really mixing which is strange because this is a post-apocalyptic world and, and the, the, the best plan that they've come up with is to divide everybody into into, in, into, into labels, into boxes yeah. and, and give them a, a, a colour um, and that's it so you, you, she joins Dauntless and it's kind of like this uh, ragtag security force uh, kind of starship troopers all of a sudden we're, we're seeing the whole process of her training through her eyes yeah. and um uh, is she, she's exceptional is she she she's she's up and down actually she she's very uh, she there's a, a test before they actually join dauntless it's to actually jump, jump down yeah um, i remember that but the the jumping on the train she's a bit crap at and uh, once she's on the train she meets uh, a, a friend who's the, the girl but you know every, as soon as people start talking you know who all the main characters are and they just all start coming out and there's this uh, there's Luke Goss from Bross who seems to be running the joint who's uh, okay now I have cramp this is a very entertaining episode of uh, Frame by Frame where I'm you've got a new baby should we do to sit in the same spot for hours on end let's just pretend I'm doing river dance right now okay uh, uh, yeah 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 this is great okay cramp gone <laughs> Luke Goss, yeah, Luke Goss, yeah, he, yeah, that he's the, he's the main guy who's a, he's a bit of a hard ass and uh, good in Blade Two, was he? Yeah, he was in Blade Two. Luke Goss or this guy? Oh, well, Luke Goss was in Blade Two. Oh, really? Was he? You know the main? Have you seen Blade Two? Uh, I vaguely. It's the best Blade film. It's a really good film. No, oh, right. yeah, the main bad guy with a big chin. Oh, really? Chin thing. Yeah, that's Luke oh, Goss. That's you him. wouldn't tell them to that. No, do you know what? It's amazing how these sometimes these pop, pop stars just give it a go and they do they do quite well and then you never see them again. Yeah, because he Gael Del Toro directed Blade Two and he had him back for Hellboy Two. Oh well. right. And I think he, could, you know, when a director can see something in someone, yeah, I think you're right for this. But he never gets picked up for anything else. No one else used to be able to do any good with him. Not seeing anything. Yeah. Really, so. That is when will I be famous? I guess. But yeah, this guy who looks a lot like Luke Goss, who's not Luke Goss, is running the joint. And then they, then you've got Pretty Boy, um, who is the, um, the kind of like the, the supervising guardian of the Dauntless uh, newbies. Right. And uh, he's taken his shine, off, obviously, to um, to the new Golden Block, who's now calling her, herself Triss, um, because yeah, she wants a cool new name, and uh, she's chosen that. Um, and then they just go through all these kind of testing it's kind of like yeah Yeah. so it's like Starship Troopers pretty much which you know there's so much in the movie is about them just kind of like trying to shoot guns trying to get better at shooting guns um, hitting targets right Um, and of course because it's a dystopian future they're they're able to do it under the the landscape of of wrecked buildings and, and beautifully a beautiful architecture structures that have just been demolished yeah. and they live a life in ruins and you know it's it's interesting but it's it's kind of like well where's this all going you're thinking well why why are we interested in this what what's what's to do with all the factions why is Kate Winslet um, wearing that weird hair <laughs> wearing that hair it's that's like, all I remember because I watched the film quite a long a while ago and that's all I remember from the film was her hair yeah, yeah. I think I prefer Gary Oldman in the role. To be honest, it would have been better. Yeah, I, I, I would have liked to. Have, she doesn't play hardcore, uh, tough lady very well. I, I don't think. No, it's not her calling, is it? 
no, no, she. I, I didn't really believe that she is. It's an odd um, role for her to take up. It's like Ashley Judd as well. And yeah, but, but she, I've not seen her in a, in a lot recently, so maybe she'll just take what's given to her. Now. Wow. And then tweeting. She yeah. does. She tweets. She tweets. That's it. Yeah. People make a living out of that these days. Apparently so, and most of them are actors. Yeah. Um, but so she she was the, of course she played the mother. And um, Carl from Ghost, the bank guy from Ghost, played the father. I hadn't seen him before for ages, yeah, yeah. and I kind of thought, well, it's a shame they didn't expand his role. He was just kind of a throwaway part, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but yeah, we see her doing the training, and um, then we discover that there's there's trouble in the factions. That one set of factions is, is oh, inferior, no. going to be wiped out, and uh, they're going to use the Dauntless, use drugs. Uh, serum to kind of turn them all into uh, into faceless um, soldiers and have them all go on an execution ring mm. um, and that's kind of all I remember from the film what did you think of Divergent? I am um, <laughs> Kate Winslet's hair yeah Kate Winslet's hair yeah that's a pretty much all I took for. again it's another it's, it's a serviceable film but it's nice to watch because you kind of you kind of just you, you, you kind of think okay I know what's going to happen it's like watching a film you love yeah you know what I mean you know what's going to happen and you just let it just all pan out but it's not a film I love it's a film that I'm seeing for the first time but I know exactly what's going to happen throughout the whole film yeah but what do it's you think it's a familiar dish yeah and you know that you're going to go and watch the sequels because you know that it's going to be a familiar dish yeah, it's something that you can just have on in the background. Yeah. And you don't really have to invest in too yeah, much. Exactly. Hunger Games is slightly different, though. I think the Hunger Games are. I'm, good, not, are I'm not through with Divergent yet. <laughs> oh, sorry. Dear me. <laughs> you're jumping the gunning. Well, no, no, Hunger Games. Sorry, but you're going to make a, a, a point. No, I was to say, I think um, the Hunger Games are actually um, a decent films. I think they're, they're actually really good. They do. Sit, they take their time with the, the they first do. one. The, the first Hunger Game is basically Battle Royale. It's just a rip yeah. off of Battle Royale. But I think it's down to Jennifer Lawrence just being great. She's a great screen presence. I don't think they'd be anywhere near as good if they hadn't found her for Katniss Everdeen. And I think you're right there. I mean, I, and I, I oh, kind thanks. of, I kind of feel as though that Divergent is jumping on the back of the wagon mm. in a way um, by having a, another girl who is yeah the Pilgrim girl who, yeah, who yeah. lived a simple life who was all, all of a sudden thrown into this ultra violent environment and, uh, and, and they're making a big thing about uh, about these these characters are all women mm. uh, that, uh, the, the, the main characters are women who, are, who get to fight alongside men and, and yeah. it's trying to make it as seamlessly genderless as possible mm. But by tripping up by doing the, the same typical services that all gender specific films have and you know that every single girl is going to fall in love with their mentor or have some sort of a relationship with a male member of, of that team who she gets on really well with yeah it's inevitable that, again that's where Hunger Games is different because they haven't done that well she has um, when she's took away from her family and you know her sort of society of people she has a, a boyfriend but then she has to... Gale. Yeah but, yeah. but obviously at the end of the first Hunger Games, he they both win, don't they? And, and then they have to start acting for the crowd that them two have a relationship as well. For the sponsors. Uh, yeah, and her boyfriend yeah. is watching all this on TV and it's all acting out. And it, and then the, obviously the class divide is a massive thing in the Hunger Games as well. You've got the, yeah. the super powerful... The yeah. rich who like to wear really bizarre clothing and yeah which I kind of like it's yeah kinda, it's, it's, it's hyper like burlesque it's got a Baz yeah. Luhrmann feel to it don't yeah, you think yeah 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 absolutely yeah without the musical hype yeah yeah but and yeah like, I kind of I like that you know yes I, I think you're, you're right Hunger and it's Games. talking a lot about you know how we see celebrity yeah. and how it really is and it's what Running Man didn't quite run run with the book did the, the the book did yes. yeah but, but the, the, film. the film certainly didn't no. it was more about the the fact that they, Ar Arnie's yeah. going to kill everyone <laughs> yeah but it, it's that 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 idea that that they've actually they've taken their time with it as well and th there's a few things in in the Hunger Games that I found with, that that I could relate to mm. more than any of the other films there's a moment where she she's 
showing the uh, aristocratic high orders uh, who are all sitting uh, kind of uh, uh, up above watching them practicing with their bows yeah and she she takes a shot at the target while they're all watching and she misses and um, they all that laugh and uh, so she just calmly just goes over picks another bow uh, picks another arrow puts them on a bow and then she turns hits the target turns around and none of them are watching her and and it this it just reminded me of, of you know you, you kind of get this feeling sometimes that uh, when you do great things they're never actually noticed mm. but when you when you fall everybody notices yeah absolutely and I think that's that was a that's just one little scene mm. I mean to walk away with that is, is, is worth it you know to have that kind of a connection I didn't get that with Divergent with Divergent I was just waiting for them to surprise me with something that was not a typical scene there's a moment where the 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 girl the friend of a main character she's she's not doing very well in the fight in the testing fight so uh, Luke Goss picks her up from the ground and shakes her off and says you know carry on so he, they walk off and they're just about to cross this ravine so then he he throws her over and forces her to hold on to the sides with her fingers just kind of like I say you know you're gonna have to man up and and you know stop being a coward you're gonna mm. have courage and a part of me thought. Are they going to do it? Are they going to just kill a character off to to kind of up the stakes, to kind of build this kind of sense of 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 raw uh, energy for the film? Is, is are they going to do it? No. So yeah, one of them kills herself, doesn't she? Oh, the guy kills himself um, because yeah. he. Uh, it, it was actually the um, the sympathetic character who she meets at the beginning on the train. Who, yeah. Uh, uh, which which is the same with the, the chubby kid from the Maze Runner yeah that's that he's, guy he's that guy who is nice and, and he gets along and, you know it, but in this case he makes a mistake um, but because he, because he's scared and he's trying to he's trying to stay in the you know he's desperately trying to stay in and the only way he can think of doing it is by getting rid of her you know yeah. he doesn't want to be a faction it's good apparently like, before I actually uh, I, we have to explain that if you don't cut it in Dauntless you become factionless, right? <laughs> and that's hilarious. The, the way they painted it, that 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 the people who are factionless, are literally are just like homeless bums. Just don't we have that? It kind of reflects what we have in well, real life, yeah. though. When when people th think for themselves completely and see the world for what it is, yeah, they don't. They're not the people who will get the high end jobs. They're not the they're the people who might end up on drugs because they're mentally ill. Yeah, but they're yeah. not. They just see the world for what it is. For what it is, yeah. Instead of actually jumping on board the the wagon of exactly being exactly like everybody else, to, to they're not they're not tarnishing themselves and this and putting themselves in the box. Thank God, a lot of those people have found you know became comedians like Bill Hicks. Yeah, who got off the ride and went. What the hell is this? But wouldn't you like to see a divergent film um, about the bums, about the factionless? Wouldn't that be interesting? That'd be good if the factionless, one member of the factionless, yeah. factionless, <laughs> ended up doing something that would be interesting. Yeah, you know just, what I mean? Oh, I, somehow rock the boat. Because I saw the stereotypical look of them, like they like they didn't do in all of these films. When it's post-apocalyptic, if you're not. If you're not a part of a, a group, you're you're literally sitting there watching television just to keep warm. A f you know, the, 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 the Terminator scene where there's a mother yeah. and child sitting there watching a burnt out television with flames. They've got no future. They've got no life, and they're just going to live in misery for the mm. rest of their life. But does I'm sure that there are actually some really really happy uh, factionless people out there who are doing some amazing gigs <laughs> who yeah. are musicians yeah who absolutely are, uh, but no 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 writing you know, incredible poetry if you're not a thinker if you're not athletic if you're not uh, a carer or 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 a grounds worker if you're not a, a real lover of, of of the earth and want to provide food then you are nothing you, it, it, so they're basically doing a disservice to art in itself by well, what is creating that doing? schlock and th this is catered for say teenagers yeah. I'd say well, mostly telling them. What, yeah exactly what sort of lesson is that teaching them you have to belong to either this 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 or this or you're going to be end up like that yeah but rebelling is also good it seems that rebelling is not the same thing as being a bum or an outcast 
But yeah, but the thing with her, is she's divergent, so she is different. She is than everybody different. Else. And uh, okay, let's let's that's that is one of my pet peeves about this this whole idea. The fact that she is divergent makes her make, factionless. Makes that makes her different from everybody else. And the idea of the film is that if the test doesn't reveal which faction you are, then the, the isn't that the machine? Uh, uh, isn't that a technical error of the machine? Yeah. If, if it if, if it does not determine what faction you are meant to be, th- what makes her any different to any of those other characters in 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 the film, other than the fact that uh, she has a, a, a kind of a, a wider sense of her of her the world that she lives in? Mm. She's she she doesn't just see one color; she sees all the colors. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't make her superhuman. It doesn't make her a mutant. It doesn't make her dangerous. It just makes her a free thinker. Is that pretty much what it is? Free thought. So do you, yeah. <laughs> so after all these times, we're still we're still stealing off Orwell. Yeah. Of course. It's 1984. It is 1984. It's, it still is. Um, but yeah, there's there's nothing new in this film. But it does it does stamp out. It's the island as well. You know, the, you know the idea of um, oh, the island, having yeah. free thought. And having the ability to break free from your, um, yeah, from being. That's what I mean. You must think this, or this will happen. Yeah, exactly. But the, obviously, the path that she goes on, I'm hoping that they're actually going to kind of explore that a little bit more and maybe shake it up a little bit. But from what I see, it just seems to be just a, a run-of-the-mill um, action thrill sci-fi film. Why do you think these post-apocalyptic? films as do so well and why do you think Hollywood churn them out it's a good question I mean they are in, in their numbers I mean yeah. at the moment they're the most popular books to be read mm. um, they're a form of escapism but what are people escaping to a sen- uh, a, it's kind of like a the hidden sense of, of communist or totalitarian regime yeah it, it's, it's I mean it's, Star Wars has the same thing, you know. It has you either this or you're that. It, they love boxing people into into groups and sets, but but post-apocalyptic films do it more so. They do. The conspiracy theorist in me, yeah, is like saying like it's because they they want that's what they want. Do they want they're, us to? Yeah, they're, they're watching that to say in the future, in the not too distant future, when a police state hits will be used to it because we've seen it so much in films and say well yeah. that's kind of the way we know, how to, we know how to act and you can sneak it in that way yeah it's like a, this is like a training video for your future yeah oh <laughs> that's that is creepy because yeah I mean tell me what are the problems with, with the earth right now with, with the people on, on the planet earth what are our main problems well I'd say one of the main problems is the the 5% of the world controlled 95% it was 5% of the world controlled 95% of and that there's a great YouTube clip find it it's great of this banker who was talking about um, he was looking forward to the next financial crash because he makes so much money out of it yeah and I remember because she was talking I forget the newscaster who was uh, interviewing him but she was t- taken back by what he said he was like what well, and he said, you're trying to say that, you know, like poli- politicians own the world. He goes, the politicians don't, presidents don't own the world. Goldman Sachs own the world. Yeah. And the woman was just taken back saying, you can't say that. I, I, I have a confession, which is, uh, I go to bed every night, I dream of another recession. I dream of another moment like this. Why? Because uh, people don't seem to uh, maybe remember, but uh, the 30s depression, the depression in the 30s, wasn't just about a market crash there were some people who were prepared to make money from that crash uh, when the market crashes uh, when the euro and the big stock markets crash if you know what to do if, if you have the right plan to set up uh, you can you can make a lot of money from this uh, for example hedging strategies then investing in bonds treasury bonds that sort of stuff if you could see the people around me jaws have collectively dropped at what you've just said i mean we we appreciate your candor however it doesn't help the rest of us does it all the rest of the eurozone i would say this listen i would say this to everybody who's watching this this economic crisis is like a cancer if you just wait and wait thinking this is going to go away just like a cancer it's going to grow and it's going to be too late what i would say to everybody is get prepared uh, this is not a time right now to 
um, wishful thinking the government is going to sort things out. The governments don't rule the world. Goldman Sachs rules the world. Goldman Sachs does not care about this rescue package, neither does the big funds. So actually, what I, would, I, I would actually tell people, I want to help people. Uh, people can make money from this. It isn't just traders. Because in less than 12 months, uh, my prediction is the savings of mil millions of people is going to vanish. I would say be prepared and act now. The biggest risk people can take right now is not acting. No matter what we do, we are told by something to do something. Mm. It's like you need to have this or you will not belong to this. It goes back to yes, that. Yes, and that's what it is. And now we're kind of going back to this whole post-apocalyptic idea that we need to be told in all these films that we have to belong to something. That uh, we, we, are, we need to carry on labelling. Yeah, yeah. We need to always, always box and label people. Gender... Uh, specific. I mean, exactly like we said with Ma Maze Runner. As soon as a girl is is, is introduced to a to a, a, a male populace in a film, we immediately think conflict. Yeah, and, and which I was surprised in the Maze Runner, it it, did. it didn't happen. But we think it. Yeah, I thought but it it's because... important that we think it. It's not mm. important that they reveal it or show it because they're not able to do that because that's the truth that we are only able to think ourselves. Yeah, when that guy hangs that girl off the ravine. And, and and tells her that she's weak, that she's got to climb her way up, got to find a way. You know, I want her to drop down and 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 die, not because I don't like the character, but because I want the film to make a point. Yeah. I want the film to 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 shake me up, to 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 make me think that you know. But it doesn't do it. It doesn't want you to. It wants it wants you to think about everything that it's not able to produce. But as long as you're thinking it. That's all that matters. Yeah. As long as they're advertising the thoughts of those thoughts and feelings that you're not supposed to have, mm. then you're still going to be reinforced by the images of factions, groups, and the things that you're actually supposed to just fall into. Advertising and marketing is just awful. Isn't I it? have no idea what I just said. It was great. <laughs> it was well, just going back to the advertising <laughs> marketing, yeah. you know, it was really good. Very incre incredible points, and um, I think. Just we've got to TV a little bit because I've always thought this. You know, yeah. like if you see an episode, just about trying to dumb people down, try not to let oh, yeah. them think and to say, because you're talking about. I think I would be, I'd be divergent because I don't fit. I've never felt like I fit into anything. Growing up was quite lonely for me because I found it difficult to have friends because. Yeah. I. It's only when I got a little bit older I found out there's people who had similar interests to me, yes. like film and music, but. Yeah, but, but, but people are afraid to actually say that they're into it. Yeah, and I don't. Why? I've never fitted yeah. into yeah. any kind of. Same here, yeah. Yeah, you know, so. Um, but I often thought that, like. Like EastEnders or something like that. An episode of EastEnders, oh. right? Someone may find out that they're married to what now turns out to be the cousin, and oh my god, and my dad. Is, love triangle uh, with. Yeah, my dad loved triangle with someone and then this and then that's happened and this person's got AIDS on his finger and whatever it might be and the average person at home watching that will go well my life ain't that bad yeah yeah and you stop you just you it angers me this because this means to be, when did we get into this paradigm of you're born you have to go to school have to Yes, it's a legal requirement have, to go to school. Yeah, yeah. And then you get a job, and then you die. Yes. Oh, retire, 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 retire. and then die. The dream. Retiring is the island. And, and, Retiring and, yeah. is the island. And then halfway through that, you have a child, <laughs> so that child can go on the same course and do the same thing, yeah. and keep this modern this paradigm going. Oh, yeah, we're slaves, man. It really is, and and, and That's human, slavery. Human race is is really, uh, and and we, as long as we keep on getting this this image pumped in our brains that it's okay to be labelled in factions it's okay to think that you can be successful and not achieve because EastEnders is all about um, you know like that. there's that character Ian Beale who no matter what he tries to do uh, as an uh, as an entrepreneur or, or any ideas that he wants you know, I'm talking probably like decades ago he's probably not even in the show anymore this is like right. how long I've seen it um, no matter what he tries he always fails and ends up working in the chip shop Right. Okay. It's okay to have dreams. They they say it's okay, but I don't believe them. I don't no. believe that it's okay to have dreams. They don't want you to have dreams. Because, they don't want you to. Because what what does every single dream in, uh, require you to do? If you want to actually set up your own business, what you got to do? 
Chloe self is self employed. <laughs> yes, but most of the time you have to have a built a, a business loan or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you have yeah. to build. You have to basically build your empire with borrowed money, mm. and then. So the idea of a dream is to is to is to create your own business or to create your own income. Um, and that, yeah, exactly. And you've got again advertisements coming from banks are telling you, "Oh, we've got such an interest rate on new businesses starting out." Mm. You know, you'd be paying back at ten point six percent and yes. stuff. And oh, don't get me started on fractional reserve lending. Well, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> so Do not on... get me started on fractional reserve lending. I love that line. That is going to be the tagline on this episode. <laughs> Do not get me started. Um, I have all <laughs> kinds of anger against credit and the way banks exactly. work and stuff. But this, the dystopian future is here, man. There is no way of saying Which, it, that, you know that we are actually in it. But they keep on telling. I think they're just telling us that this, it's not there yet. We're not there. This is maybe because there's not been an apocalypse. No, but maybe that so has. We, how do we know? How do we know? How do we know? If there we hasn't? wouldn't know. That's the thing. <laughs> the news we watch. We're, we're seeing what we're meant to see. We're not seeing the real <laughs> life. I was. This is really dark, and I'm sorry if you, anyone was listening to this. But I'm going to say something that's really dark. But it shocked me because it's not even on my frame of reference. Yeah. I was listening to a podcast, and it, the guy does a lot of work in Uganda. Right. For um, it's something to humanity or something. It's it, it's about children should have a life essentially, but these kids had, humanity, had yeah. seen. Yeah. The parents, yeah, murdered, mutilated, put into a stew, and forced to eat. Yes, I ne- that was even. I, what shocked me most about that is I couldn't even. I, it's so beyond my frame of what I think is real. I, I, yeah. I was, I was shocked by it, but I couldn't feel sorry for him because I couldn't understand that that would that what that, that could ever then, happen. Is, what the the films that were addressing yeah. do. Is the the guys at the top, the five percent, who have all they have everything? Yes. And we don't have to worry about you because you're starving, and I don't have to, I don't have to deal with you. But yeah, these these films, dystopian films, are okay. Let's, let's kind of rein it back here because yeah. we're kind of really reaching to the idea that that we don't know what's going on in our world, but as long as as long as we are shown images of, of a future dystopia which is ridiculous usually I mean mm. the, the Maze Runner idea is, is a ridiculous future concept yeah it is but then you've got those other uh, I mean, uh, Hunger Games and Divergent you've got these films that are all about the look and, and the emotional feel of, of being a part of this splintered population that has no no reason to be Splintered or frac- a faction or in, yeah. in the group. There's no reason for it to all be that, of, other than the fact that that um, that humans just love to be in control. But not only that, they love to be in control of smaller numbers. They don't want to have people that they don't know about living their lives somewhere yeah. without being counted. You know, it's 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 a fear of of the unknown, and we have to make sure that we can see everybody. That's why you know, if you're wearing yellow, you're there. If you're wearing blue, you're over there. Yeah. And uh, I think I think we're afraid of 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 just not not admitting that uh, we would, would we would prefer to live in a post apocalyptic environment where we survive and thrive and live in our own quiet little communities. I think we're afraid to admit that we actually would prefer that that uh, that way of living. Yeah, a simple humble. Because what we've got now, we don't understand. What we've got now is we don't know if, if, if politicians are believable. We don't know if um, if the food that we're eating is safe. We don't know what's going on over that fence. We don't yeah. know if, if we're actually doing exactly what we should be doing in our life. But if it was broken down such into such simple five steps, five groups, then people would be... It would be an easier way of living. Yeah. How about that? That's quite a beautiful... Beautiful. Not really eloquent. <laughs> oh, it is. Uh, I, I don't know who said it, but I remember uh, reading somewhere where um, it said the only way a man's free or a woman, not being sexist, is if if you take everything away from somebody, yeah. everything, then that person's free. Yes, and that's. I mean, I I think we've all done it somewhere where along our lives where we've lost everything. Yeah. Um. I, I went to Australia and lived in a suitcase. <laughs> in a suitcase wow 
I, you were no. a lot shorter back then. <laughs> yes, I grew a lot when I came home. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, I, was, I never wanted to mention it, but you've got this like handle shaped imprint on the side of your face. I, never, I was wondering what that was there for. Be from the yeah. and, uh, yeah. That's why I don't like public toilets. This gives me that idea that I'm on a conveyor <laughs> Go for the airport. Oh, shit, man. Um, <laughs> luggage compartments, I like them. Um, no, it, it, I, I, I live from a suitcase, I yeah. should say. Yay, poor four. And um, yeah, and it was very, very freeing to be able to just say, I just pick up that suitcase and I can go anywhere else. No, imagine if we didn't have the internet then, if we were just taken Ooh, away from it. Do you it. know what? That is fascinating. That is a fascinating d- discussion. Um, it would take another hour into this, into this show. But <laughs> yeah, because I think we should probably think about wrapping up soon. Yeah, but... Because, but, but, but in short, nobody would know what to do with themselves. No. Uh, take away the internet we'd have to start making real film and actually start to take film and to, to, to distributors and, and beg f- for the, to show our films or we'd have to start performing in public mm. um, we would never have any contact with people of, uh, in, on the international front like we do now, we'd be relying on news yeah. and newspapers and the, not the most reliable. magazines will suddenly come back in big, you know, there's, there's still magazines out there I don't know why people buy them um, it, it astonishes me um, why why they're actually worth picking up. I, I used to. I'm on Empire website virtually every day, and it was up to, it was probably last year, June, July last year. I stopped buying the magazine where I realised what I was reading the magazine. I'd literally just read the night before on the website. I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. The last one I bought was um, Australia. In Australia, actually, it had Nicole Kidman on the front. I don't know what it was for. Um, so cliche well, over really. there. That would be an Australian <laughs> actress. It hits me an Australian actress, of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, yeah. Um, well, I think we've we've yeah. The, the we've, internet would be, we we'd have to read books again, basically. That's it. And people would be growing their own potatoes. It would be a simpler life. And you'd have to go to your bank. But the, I feel so. I feel sorry for all the kids who were born after 1995, because they don't know of a world without internet. No. And that is fascinating, don't you think? It's fascinating it is. that, that these, they, these 25-year-olds... We, we, we'll, we'll be saying to our kids, oh, I remember when the internet, you know, it did take about half an hour to load up a web page. Yeah. Do you remember that? I remember because I, I, yes. I used to be a massive fan of a band called Dream Theater and I'd be like, www.dreamtheater.net, enter, I go and make a brew, come yes. back and it was probably just on. Yeah, and it was just to space it, text and images... Yeah. bad colour design yeah. because everybody kind of got excited about colour on the internet and so they had pink yeah. biting and, yeah. but yeah the internet I, I'd love it to just disappear for a month just to see how that would probably be our apocalypse that would be the internet. It's that would be our apocalypse that's enough I think I think if we lost the internet um, right now you wouldn't be able to pay for anything because everything's done wirelessly now yeah You'd actually have to get cash. You'd have to go to the banks and hope that they've gotten all their systems uh, yeah. together. Um, there'd be a big long line outside of banks. You remember the, the bread lines of the nineteen twenties, yeah. thirties? Yeah, it would be like that. Yeah. And banks, by law, only have to hold ten percent in the vaults of what they actually say that they've got. Yes. So you, it, you wouldn't be getting the money. Will be going all around the place, and uh, there'll be rebellions forming. Hijacking all these these uh, these armored trucks that will be suddenly in great numbers trying to transport currency yeah. across everyone. Oh, we could write a f- we could write this man, cut this out and keep it to ourselves. Yeah, let's um, do that. <laughs> it sounds great. The internet disappears. The day the internet died. died. Let's call it that. Yeah. <laughs> so let's just cut that out and just say, yeah, it would be it would be appalling. It it it. it It'll throw a, a spanner in the works. We'd have to go and buy stamps. Oh. Yeah, I've taken to playing with the elastic band now, which usually signals the end of the podcast. Yeah. And, uh, okay, well, let's let's do this. I'm gonna hate this. Right, you ready? Ready? Three, two, one. Here at Cynodive, we understand that there is a time and a place for watching blockbuster movies. 
And there is also a time and a place for enjoying quick and easy food. That time is Cinedyne. We've combined the state-of-the-art movie ritual within our fast-growing change of multiplex cinemas with the must-have dining experience. Your attention and enjoyment of popcorn movies is enhanced by 3,000% thanks to our fully disclosed secret ingredient which you can enjoy within all of your favorite food items. Popcorn, hot dogs, nachos with Ed's special liquid cheese, and not to mention our City Dine menu with food suitable for all ages, religions, and counterculture professionals. At City Dine, we are proud to use British meat, which is also suitable for all vegetarians, vegans, and diabetics. And for those fussy little children who are ready to sit down and glance occasionally at the screen, every food item contains sherbet of some description. Even our economically sized popcorn boxes are edible. That's right! You can even eat the plates, Dad! That's right, little one. Cinedyne has listened, and we know what makes your next movie experience the best one you've ever had. Until next time, that is. <laughs> Cinedyne. Fanatical about food. <laughs>